Hello, and in this video we're going to talk about margins and padding. But before we do that, let's just quickly cover the heading tags, because I meant to cover them last tutorial, um, last video tutorial, it isn't the last text tutorial, but I kind of forgot. So let's just quickly go over them. They're really simple tags, and essentially it's just H1 is the most simple tag, and that's heading 1. It's going to be the biggest, most general heading on the page. And so we can type big heading... Uh, this is an HTML page, wow, and we can do slash h1 to end the h1 element there, so this is going to be our header 1 text, and then we can do all the way uh, down to h1, h2, h3, h4, h5, h6, etc. So we can go h3 is probably going to be more suitable, and we can write lorem ipsum as kind of a subheading for our lorem ipsum text that follows there. So if we just save that, and, oops, don't worry about that, what that was there before, um, and you can see, there we go. That's pretty much what we want. We have big heading, and then we have a slightly smaller subheading, and then we have our text, and then we have a horizontal rule, then we have some more text, and then we have our list. So let's actually go ahead and move into margins and paddings, I guess, because hopefully these simple simple tags, uh, hopefully these simple tags shouldn't be too confusing. I just felt I should add these in because I really did mean to add them last time. So uh, I guess we can keep them there. They're quite nice on the page. But let's move on to margins and padding. So pretty much, let's go over margins first. Now, a margin is pretty much what a margin is kind of in real life, really. Um, if you had, I'm not going to give real, 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 I'm not going to give a real life example. But let's just say we had a paragraph, and we decided we want some more spacing at the top of the paragraph element to separate it out. So in this case, you might want, oops, I want some more space between this lorem ipsum heading and between this paragraph here, you could go, okay, I want the top margin on the paragraph element to be a little bit more, and that's just going to push the paragraph element down because it's got more space at the top. And margin is pretty much just the name we give to this kind of clear space. So I guess let's use this example. Let's go ahead and use P. That's going to do all the P's, isn't it? I don't think that should be too much of a problem there. And... Just to quickly demonstrate what I want to do, I'm actually going to use a property which I haven't taught you yet, and I'm going to teach you, teach you uh, a little bit later in the series of tutorials, but it's the background property, and we're just going to set it to red, just set the background of our paragraphs to red. So don't worry about that too much, I'm going to cover it in later tutorials. And we can see now all of our paragraphs have a background which is red. But um, And also that we have this white space here, 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 here. Now, why is there white space here, and why is there white space here? Well, let's just quickly set our paragraph margins to zero. And all we do is we use the margin keyword as a property, and then we just give it zero. And that's going to set all the margins that are on our paragraph elements to nothing. So there's going to be no margins on our paragraph elements. If we refresh, ah, you can see the space has gone down a lot. Now, what it is, that's because the browser pretty much puts default values for different elements. So for example, the paragraph might have a default margin value as it has. So it probably had like maybe 10 pixels on the top, 10 pixels on the bottom. And I don't think it had any left or right margins, but you know, we clearly have some more margins here. They're probably coming from a horizontal rule if we just use our HR selector. And then also again, use the margin property and set that to zero. We can see, uh -huh, now we pretty much have, in fact, I'm not going to say pretty much, now we actually have no margins between our paragraphs, our HR, and our other paragraph. Uh, of course, we have other margins around the page, default margins for our, H, um, for our H1 to H6, for our different heading tags. In fact, they constantly annoys lots of web developers, because basically what they're going to have to do is they're just going to have to then go to all their heading tags and set all the margins to zero and then set them themselves, because a lot of people don't like, obviously... Firstly, there's a problem with variation if different browsers are applying different default properties. And there, I mean, there are all kinds of problems it can cause, but usually you can just get around that by setting the margins to zero and then setting them to something else a bit later. So let's just take away our HR thing here, and I guess let's play around with the margin on the paragraph. So first thing we could do, let's just give it a value such as 10 pixels. Oops, not 109 pixels, that would be a little bit huge. Or well, let's give it 50 pixels to make it clear. In fact, you know what? Let's just remove the margin thing completely first. So this is what it looked like before, and now it's pretty back. A margin of 50 pixels. I've just used margin property, 50 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. So whoa, what's happened here? Now, whenever you just use the margin property by just writing the margin word keyword and then writing a value for the property, 
you can see what it actually does is it's going to apply 50 pixels to every single side of the element. See, we have top, we have right, we have bottom, we have left, and it's applied 50 pixels of margin to every side of the element. Now, okay, why is this? That's pretty much because it's saying, okay, you want a margin of 50 pixels. How's this supposed to know if you want it on the top, the left, the right, the bottom, or, you know, where the hell you want it? So, what we're going to do is, let's just quickly show off this little shorthand method here. So, there are different ways of setting the margins of different sizes, which I'm going to show you in a minute, but this is a shorthand way of setting all the sizes if you want to. So, let's just specify two values. Let's just do a space and say maybe 10 pixels. So, let's refresh. And, aha, we still have 50 pixels on the top and the bottom, but now the left and the right, they've changed to 10 pixels. Now, again, why this is, if we specify two values, hang on just a sec. Uh, if we specify two values, it gets the first and sets this to the top and the bottom margins, and then it gets the second and it sets this to the left and the right margins. And if we specify four values, then it's going to do the top and then the right and then the bottom and then the left. So you can say 50, 10, 0, 10, like that. So now there shouldn't be any margin on the bottom of the paragraph, 50 on the top, 10 to the left and 10 to the right. Okay, brilliant, that's just what we wanted. So margins, they're just this clear space, we can apply them to any element we like, and we can use a shorthand method like this. Now what we can also do, because let's just say in this case we only wanted to apply the margin to the top, what we can do is we can just use the margin hyphen top property, and that's just going to set the margin to the top, like these two. Oh, please ignore that. Um, so we have margin top, we also have margin bottom, and that's only going to set to the bottom, we also have margin left, and we also have margin right, like that. So they're all going to work fine. Margin hyphen top, margin hyphen bottom, margin hyphen left, margin hyphen right, and we just have our margin shorthand property, which we can use for a ton of things, as we've already discovered. But for now, let's just completely remove margin. And let's just remember the way this looked like before. So what the hell is padding? If margin gives us clear space, what else do we want in a document, you know? Well, padding is kind of like filling. And the best way for me to show you this is to... Oh, please, people, stop emailing me and things. Uh, the best way for me to illustrate this is to actually show you. So we're just going to use the padding. So uh, can't even speak. We're just going to use the padding property and give it a value of, let's just say, 50 pixels like we did before. Now, whoa, what's happened here? Now, instead of leaving white space, it's pretty much extended the element 50 pixels each side, like that. Now, you can see the text doesn't take up this space, so adding some padding to a paragraph or to a division, we haven't done divisions yet, or, but to an element can actually be really nice to actually say, you know what, I don't actually want my text to touch all of the edges of everything, because that's going to look really horrible. So padding is actually a very, very useful tool in this sense. If we set the padding to 10 pixels, it's probably about right, maybe, what we're going to want it for these little paragraph blocks. But the important thing is, this is part of the element. It isn't just kind of like no one's space. It's owned by the element. Now, just as before, we can specify two values if we want. And uh, it's going to do what it did before. We can specify four values if we want. Oops, it's not going to make a difference. Um, and it's just going to do what it did before. And we also have padding top, padding bottom, padding left, padding right just as we did before with the margins. So we can just set these individual things as well. So in this case, we probably want to use just padding, and we might want 10 for the top and bottom, and maybe 5 for the left and right. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Now that is why I've set the background property on these elements, because if I didn't set the uh, the color to red, or you know to anything which isn't white, then it'd be very difficult for you to see the difference between the margin and the padding. So let's just remove the red for now, and we can see this is what we wanted to accomplish. We now have some nice padding around the text. Perhaps we just want to change this a bit, so let's say... <coughs> let's just say we have 10 for all sides, and then perhaps we have margin, and we want maybe only 5 pixels for the top and bottom, and no pixels for the left and right. How's that going to look? That's pretty much how I was envisioning it, so I quite like mine looking like that. I guess it looks a little bit odd because it's not quite lined up with these headings. So let's just apply some styling to these guys as well. So H1, and what else do we have here? And H3. So what we can actually do in CSS, I'm not sure if I've taught you this yet, but we can 
give one selector and then do a comma space and then do another selector, so H3. In this case, we might want to do H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. So we can actually do all of those and everything inside it, all the rules inside this, they're all going to affect all of these selectors. So if I just go ahead and set the margin to 5 pixels, 0 pixels, and... Um, I don't know, I actually seem to, I quite like having margin before padding, I don't know what it is. I just feel that it, it seems... I don't know. In my mind, I just like having it before. Don't ask me why. And padding, I guess, will give 10 pixels, or maybe 0 pixels, 10 pixels? No, that doesn't really work. In fact, we're going to want... Uh, the problem is with spec... Let's, let's remove the margin. Get away margin. Yeah, that's what we wanted. So we have a little bit of padding on the headings, which you're just going to do the left and right for 10 pixels. And then on the paragraphs, we have a margin 5 pixels to the left and right, and 0 pixels up and down. And then we have padding for 10 pixels all the way around. And that just looks exactly like that. So that's pretty much what we've been trying to accomplish with margin and padding. Then hopefully you should really understand kind of what they're used for now, as well as obviously very important heading tags. They are really important in HTML, and I really wish I'd covered them in the last story rather than having to kind of just squeeze them into this one. But I mean, I'm not imagining that's too much of a problem for you guys. Uh, when we get onto divisions, especially, this margin and padding stuff becomes really, really, really useful because I don't want to ruin it for you. You know, look for that divisions tutorial if it's not up yet nag me to get up because that divisions tutorial plus this margin and padding stuff it's gonna be awesome so uh, i guess i'll see you in the next tutorial video have a nice day